All right, let's do Bible study for 15 minutes. <laughs> hey, glory. Glory to God. <laughs> for 15 minutes, let's look upon the perfect law of liberty. Acts of the Apostles, chapter 1. Amen. The former three times have I made, O Theophilus, of all that Jesus began both to do and to teach. Until the day in which he was taken up, after that he, through the Holy Ghost, had given commandments unto the apostles whom he had chosen. So it means there were many apostles, but the apostles unto whom he gave commandment were the apostles that he had chosen. And these ones that he had chosen, because they're such as were not chosen, and there was no reason for him to show unto them himself alive. You know, the reading says, to whom also he showed himself alive that means to the apostles that he had chosen there was a responsibility that he had to show himself alive after his suffering and how did he do that by many infallible proofs being seen of them 40 days and speaking of the things pertaining to the kingdom of god and being assembled together with them, commanded them that they should not depart from Jerusalem, but wait for the promise of the Father, which said he, ye have heard of me. For John truly baptized with water, but ye shall be baptized with the Holy Ghost not many days hence. When they were therefore come together, there was a break in the lecture so when they came back from break and they were come together they asked the question will you at this time hallelujah will you at this time restore again the kingdom unto israel and he said unto them, it is not for you to know the times or the seasons which the Father has put in his own authority. But ye shall receive power. After that the Holy Ghost has come upon you. And ye shall be witnesses unto me. Both in Jerusalem and in all Judea and in Samaria and unto the uttermost part of the earth. This is an introductory presentation that I intend to do that will be the foundation of the subsequent um, deliverables that is consistent with my own quarter in the conference. You know, everyone came with a dispensation, came with a quarter. This is going to be the foundation of my own quarter. Because the Holy Spirit in Jesus was unlimited and in us, he tabernacles in measures. So we are in custody of quotas. And that's why we can only find the fullness in the conclave, the context of the body of Christ. So I come with a quota. I come with a testament and a testimony. The, the Bible says, and I need you to understand the emotional situation that surrounded the death of Jesus. Just in case you were so passionate about the ministry of Jesus and then you saw him die. It's quite a heartbreak. It was as if hope was beginning to come into the landscape and everyone was identifying Jesus as the salvation of the people. And in the midst of his rising, in the midst of his ascendancy, he was caught up. Hallelujah. I say hallelujah. Amen. And there was an expectation that after that he was cut off, everything that had 
he brought and everything that was an accompaniment in his life should shut down. And it came to pass that God raised him from the dead. But it was not something that was done quietly. The people that had to know that he was raised from the dead saw him bodily. But Jesus knew the psychological impact and implication of uh, the dead reality. And so when he ascended into the heavens, he decided to apply for a casual leave. A casual leave of 40 days. And when that casual leave was granted, he decided to come to conduct a refresher course. To conduct tutorials for the people that will carry on the business of extending the frontiers of the kingdom. This educational facility that Jesus established is the basis of all apostolic endeavors upon the face of the earth. And just in case you are into some form of labor that is not in conformity with that which was captured in the 40-day capacity building program, <laughs> you are running amiss. And it is possible to be running fast in the wrong direction. Hallelujah. Now I'd like us to glean from scripture. Glean a little from scripture. This first statement I want to make, I've made it three times before and you have heard it, but I still need to make it again before we make progress. And if time permits me, I intend to end in Acts chapter 1 verse 8. At that point, the foundation would have been laid. Then we'll not do the subsequent buildings on that foundation. First of all, Luke, that wrote the book of Acts of the Apostles, made a reference to a former treatise. And I would like us to consult with Luke in the first, his first treatise, the former treatise that he was making reference to. Uh, probably we might find some foundational emphasis upon which to base the realities that are captured in the book of Acts of the Apostles. Turn your Bible just like we did um, Acts chapter 1. And Acts chapter 1 verse 1 uh, reveals that the person that Luke was addressing in the book of Luke happens to be the, sex, the, the same person that Luke was addressing in the book of Acts. So let's do Acts chapter 1 verse 1 and find out the context and the reason for the endeavors and the initiatives that Luke began to pioneer. There is a former treatise that we need to um, research into in order for a foundation of uh, the understanding of the book of the Acts of the Apostles to be robust enough. In the book of Luke chapter 1, oh my, technical man, can you help me? He said, for as much as many have taken in hand to set forth in order a declaration of those things which are most surely believed amongst us. I would like you to understand the body that this man is walking with. This man is saying that it has become popular for so many people to speak about Jesus. This man is saying that unaccredited entities have taken it in hand to talk about Jesus because the issues about Jesus have become popular. So it is very possible for the matter of Jesus to be exploited, to be explored as a reason for many, many things because it's a popular thing to talk about Jesus. I'm saying at that time, this day, Sunday sun, um, punch the headlines, you find something about Jesus. Because somebody died, he was certified dead, and suddenly uh, they could not find his dead body. So there were so many people that had some explanation for the things that have happened. So it was popular in those days to talk about Jesus. But Luke was saying, are you with me? Are you here? Just like now it's very popular 
a herbalist can leave his practice, put on suit, put on a collar, and come behind the pulpit and is practicing the same stuff? Because Jesus is business. You didn't say amen there. <laughs> when we do Jesus, it's great business. You, you can get a lot of money if you know how to play your cards. A bank manager was educating a pastor. He said, the way you are running that thing, nothing runs like that and survives. If you want to run this thing, come take a loan from the bank. You garnish the place. You make the place look. You see, what you are doing is more psychological than spiritual. The people that know the business behind what we are doing understand the psychological dimensions which you are not exploiting. Oh my God. There should be a vote. A vote that moves the offering box. You don't need to stretch. That, this locomotive kind of... No, 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 no. A vote. The thing moves. So you, you, you will be ashamed if you are going to drop something that is not substantial because it's, it's automated. Is automated. Hallelujah. <laughs> Glory to God. And the vote is transparent. <laughs> Amen. And so just in case you came with coins, when the vote is passing, you go in tongues. Bow, oh, 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 because if you drop it, there we know. The bank manager was teaching the pastor how to do business. Because it's popular to talk about Jesus. It's profitable to talk about Jesus. And that's the new trade in town. And it's not just now that that kind of scenario found expression. It was heavily available in the days of Luke. And Luke had to justify the reason why he was coming into this business of talking about Jesus. And you find that in verse 2. I'd like us to read. Even as they delivered them unto us from the beginning, were eyewitness, eyewitnesses and ministers of the word. Yes, next verse now. It seemed good to me also, having perfect understanding of all things from the very first, to write unto thee in order, most excellent Theophilus. Now, he was writing unto Theophilus, and the authority from whence his writing was based was that he received the lively oracles from those guys that were eyewitnesses of the world. It means he's a product of discipleship. It's a product of a meticulous process of the passing of knowledge and reality. He's in custody not just of knowledge, but he's in custody of the spirit of reality that is the evidence that the knowledge is from heaven. And on the strength of that, he felt that the name of Jesus was being bastardized in his generation. And so he had to come into the game of talking about Jesus, not because he wanted to implement the business possibilities that were therein, but he came as a son of order to set things in order. Now, what you are not seeing is that the scenario here is that a, a mayor had given his life to Christ. And he needed the disciple. If the governor of your state gives his life to Christ, do, do you have something to tell him? Huh? What is the metric? That's a wise man. He knows politics. He knows the dynamics of economy. He knows he's not a novice. And if you are going to present the gospel to him in a systematic fashion, such that he will get to understand and apprehend the dynamics of our God, what will you tell him? That's when you will know whether you know God. It's easy to do. But when you go to on this kind of a mission, it's not mereke will not be sufficient. <laughs> yeah. Hallelujah. I say hallelujah. Yeah. This is a skillful, a skillful, systematic progression of the truth about God as it is enshrined in the word of God and 
also to communicate the spirit of this reality as it was received from the eyewitnesses. And only a chartered Christian can do this. For this kind of duty to be performed, only chartered believers have the capacity to do this kind of business. Now, let me stay with me. Let's do another. This is the first case study. When someone is trying to address a mayor, a man that is in authority, a man that is not a, an intellectual novice, and you are trying to bring him and to instruct him in the ways of the law. There is a kind of training that you need to receive in order for you to qualify to do this kind of business. And the subject of his, his, his liturgy was to set in order those things that are most surely believed amongst us. That's what the apostles called the faith. The faith are the articles of our belief system. And this guy was theologically grounded in the faith for him to be able to lead a man that was an intellectual into the heartbeat of the workings and the dynamics of God. Do you realize that this kind of ministry is, is, is lacking? This kind of, oh, oh, Stay with me. Uh, turn, turn your Bible to 1 Corinthians. Before we start this act, let us see many scenarios. 1 Corinthians chapter 12. Are you Are you here? If you are here say amen. amen. And those of us that are outside if you are still with us say amen. Now, where is the man, the, my, um, my uh, violin man? We touch it. Let's be sure it's connected to, to the light point. Is it connected? Okay. Because we are going to soar. <laughs> Glory. Glory to God. Now, I have to. I had to ask him to come. Labo <laughs> ma. You are welcome to Zion. You are welcome. First Corinthians chapter 12. It says, Now concerning spiritual gifts, brethren, I would not have you ignorant. Before we proceed in the reading. I'd like you to understand a fracture. There is a fracture in this scripture. And if we do not identify and isolate the fracture, your understanding of the scripture is going to be limited. In, uh, if you have a good Bible, and I hope you do, you will notice that the word gift is either in italics or in bracket. Check your Bible. Is that what you find? The meaning of that is that that word gift was not in the original manuscript. The translators added it so that it should make some kind of sense. But today in our reading we are going to remove it. Ah, are you here? Are you here? There's nothing wrong if you read it with it. But I'm saying in this lecture today, we will read it without it. Okay, so there's nothing wrong. There's nothing wrong with that. So if we read it without it, what will it read? Now concerning what? Spiritual. So the subject that Paul is addressing is what? The spiritual. And in the subject called spiritual, there are three aspects. It says, concerning spiritual brethren, I will not have you ignorant. Next verse. You know that you were Gentiles carried away onto this dumb idols, even as you were led. Next verse. Wherefore, I give you to understand 
that no man speaking by the Spirit of God called Jesus accursed. And that no man can say Jesus is Lord but by the Holy Ghost. Now there are diversities of gifts but the same Spirit. Listen. Are you with me? Concerning spiritual, the first aspect of spiritual is gifts. So he says what? Now concerning spiritual gifts. Now there are diversities of gifts, but the same spirit. Number two, there are differences of administrations or ministries, but the same Lord. Number three, there are diversities of operations, but it is the same God which worketh all in all. Are you with me? So we have three things there. We have gifts, and the umpire for gifts is the spirit. We have ministries and the umpire for ministries is jesus then we have operations and the umpire for operations is god the father all of this under the broad heading what spiritual are you there now move move backward go to verse and the reason why the subject was was on spiritual Paul told us why in verse 2. In verse 2, Paul considered the background of the people, where they were coming from. He said, you know that you were Gentiles carried away by, by these dumb idols, even as you were led. So the, the Corinthians were the most people. What do they call it in, in Ghana? You either call it Ifa priest. I like that one. I don't I only know two words in Igbo language, Egbe and Ezemo. Ezemo. Hallelujah. Nagba Egbe. Bam. Now. What do you call it in Ghana? Touch her, touch her. Okay, she's, she's meditating on me. These guys were Ifa priests before they gave their life to Christ. And the responsibility of Paul was to disciple former Isimus. If you are the pastor that will disciple these people, what will you teach them? Oh, you are not with me. You are not with me because we're in the apostolic age god is restoring the apostles back to the body of christ and one of the duties of the apostles is to establish the doctrine of christ it means the quality control mechanism that god has domiciled in the church will become functional again by the appearance of apostolic ministry do you realize that when Paul wanted to educate these people, he didn't use a Bible study outline? No outline we work for an ism. The guy is educated in the spirit realm. It's just that his access into the spirit realm was through the instrumentality of a spirit of error. But it's not a total novice of spiritual matters. You need to be an icon in the spirit to educate him. Who will be the lecturer of this, this guy? Have you read that scripture that said, Whom will I teach wisdom? And unto whom will I reveal understanding? The understanding quotient of the body of Christ is on a, an all time low. And that's why falsehood is, is making a boast in the marketplace. The only way Paul was able to educate them was that he himself had encountered God in the spirit. Can you see that kind of a subject concerning what? Spiritual. Because the Ezemos were saying, we also entered the spirit realm. We used to see things there. So in order for him to ground them accurately on how to handle the spirit realm from the vista of the spirit of light, then he gave them two laws of the spirit. 
first law is that no man that is operating by the spirit of God will ever call Jesus a cost he will not contradict the authority of Jesus and the basis for that is Romans chapter 5 verse 10 Romans chapter 5 verse 10 is a two-edged sword of spiritual reality can you show me Romans 5 10 in Romans chapter 5 verse 10 we have it, it reads and I quote for if when we were enemies we were reconciled to God by the death of his son the death of Jesus provided the legal premise for the possibility of the experience of organic realities so Jesus provided the legal premise every spiritual thing that doesn't have a legal foundation cannot be established there must be a legal premise that is the foundation the basis of holding down a spiritual thing and causing it to be established and the death of Jesus provided the, the, the legal side and it's on the foundation of the legal side that has been provided that we experience the living side so the Holy Spirit's ministry is predicated on the legalities that the ministry of Jesus provided so it's a living expression of the legal provision and so the Holy Spirit's ministry cannot contradict the ministry of Jesus it's a continuation of it the Bible says that when Jesus had a change of structure morphe in the Greek he was in the form of God he did not think it robbery to be equal with God he made himself of no reputation took upon him the form of a servant he said there's a change of structure when he was in the form of God he had the property of being omniscient omnipresent omnipotent but when there was a switch in structure he became subject to all the limitations that are around humanity are you with me or squeezed he could be hungry he could then be tasty and he could also die but that was not possible when he had a certain kind of structure so when he became flesh in order to satisfy the claims of divine justice John revealed that we beheld his glory not his glory in that first form his glory when he had taken on flesh and we beheld his glory as the only begotten of the father how was it expressed it was expressed in grace and truth that was his content that means if you squeeze Jesus what will come out is grace and truth that's what the Bible means when the Bible says that he became poor of grace he was squeezed his content was squeezed out we are living on the virtue of Christ what came out of him when he was squeezed are you here that is to say that everybody that ever operates under the anointing is indebted to Jesus it will be a violation for you not to because that's his glory that grace that came upon is what is his glory and the last time I checked if you tamper with the glory of that's his due his glory is his not yours and so he decided to release some of that glory to make you carry out the ministry he would have done if you were physically present and then you take the glory it's a violation because you have not understood the source are you with me so as much as possible if you are going to practice safe ministry then your life must not contradict the hallowed personality of the Christ because it is on his excesses on his fullness that we have received grace for grace so that's the first 
He is educating his most that turned to Jesus. And he said what? No man. I, I know you have walked through the pyramid of, of the obelisk of necromancy. I know that you have moved through the pyramid of visibility and you have seen people's stars. I know that you have wielded the magic wand that can conjure spirits and invoke powers from the underworld. But when you cross to this side, no man huh, operating by the spirit can ever call Jesus a curse. And no man can say Jesus is Lord except by the Holy Ghost. Those were the two laws revealed to the Ezebu. Somebody in the congregation might ask me, is it not possible for an unbeliever to say Jesus is Lord? That is not what that scripture means. The meaning of that scripture is in the book of Romans chapter 10, verse 9 and 10. For if thou shalt confess, right, believe in thy heart the Lord Jesus, and confess with thy mouth that God raised him from the dead, thou shalt be saved you believed huh? in the Lord Jesus and you confess that he is immortal because death could not bind him that kind of believing and confession can never be achieved except by what Those were the two principles, the two laws that he gave. And we need to know these two laws because many false prophets have gone out into the world. This man brought a perspective of how to check that which is false. In the midst of the pool of various assortments of supernatural and spiritual, he said no man can say Jesus is Lord except by my question is if you were the teacher of the day when a, a humongous number of magical practitioners decided to give their life to Christ how will they fare under your tutelage the second scenario time will fail us to go to the third scenario because the third scenario will be people that have experienced the devil in another way you see they are casual unbelievers and they are murderers and people that have spilled blood and then you want they give their life to christ they are likely to go back if they do not have an encounter with the right kind of personnel that we educate them in the things of God. Are you with me? Now, from the time that the book of Luke was written, there were controversies as to what exactly were the articles of our belief system. And it took a son of order to set things in order because he had a link with the eyewitnesses. Now, have you seen the level, the, the kind of doctrinal battles going on in the body of Christ? If you have been on Facebook for some time, you will see all kinds of strange things. I was trying to listen to the sermon of a pastor and he was preaching and trying to establish why a believer is not expected to confess his sin. That is not scriptural for you to attempt to confess your sin because Jesus paid for sin. He has paid the price for sin. So, what are you confessing? And that was what that service was about to exhort the believers how that they are wasting time when they are confessing sin. 
I know intuitively most of us know that that is wrong. But in the days in which we live, it's not sufficient for you to know, just to know that it's wrong. You should be able to, like Paul, like Luke, because Luke was the disciple of Paul, to be able to set in order the things that are most surely believed among us. Because there's an attack on the fundamentals of our belief system. If we bring that scripture from the book of Proverbs and say, Oh, he that, that covereth his sins shall not prosper, and he whoso confesseth and forsaketh them shall find mercy. That's it. You're quoting from Old Testament. If you come with 1 John chapter 1 verse 9 and say, If we confess our sins, it's faithful and just to forgive us and to cleanse us from all unrighteousness. It will say it was written to, not, to Gnostics, not to believers. Meanwhile, the subject of the book of 1st John is walking in the light. He said, this is the message that we have heard from the beginning. God is light. And in him, there is no darkness at all. If we say that we have fellowship with him and our walking is in darkness, we lie. This, John chapter 1, reveals an organic marital relationship that a believer is supposed to sustain with God the context is so clear and it's in the spirit of that context walking in the light if you are going to walk in the light because the light the Bible says is that which makes manifest and if you get to walk in the light and there is darkness light will reveal it so if you are fellowshipping in the light there is no way you can avoid confession because light in its very nature has a capacity to unveil. Have you not read in your Bible how that the word of God is sharper than any two-edged sword? And the context of that scripture is actually butchering. You know, when you are butchering and you have a good dagger, you can, you can locate where the heart is. You can locate where the spinal cord is. You can locate the liver. With a good knife it will know how to unveil the thing nothing will be hidden from a good knife he said that's how the word of god is it has the capacity to pierce and to divide asunder soul and spirit bone and marrow in addition to that it is a discerner of the thoughts and the intent no nothing can go that deep to intent the word of god has that power it's so it, it, it's it's a manipulative kind of dagger he can he can carve like this and look <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. do you still remember simeon when mary and joseph came for dedication raised jesus up i said this child is for the rising and the falling of men and it shall be a sign that many shall speak against. And he looked unto Mary and said, A sword shall pierce your heart. Why? So that the thoughts of many might be revealed. Eh? We'll pierce. We'll pierce when the business has boom. And then it's not his own thought that was revealed. Though. The thoughts of many. The thoughts of many. The word of God also has multiplier re revelatory capacity. When Job was afflicted, ah, the thoughts of many were believed. You may not know the people around you until a sword, something that is supernatural, now enters into your space. It has a capacity to reveal the thoughts of many. The nature of light is that it has a revelatory capacity. And if you are going to walk in light, the prescription is you will have many things to confess. That is the protocol of walking in light. So if a man is making a case against confession, he stopped walking in light. And the implication of refusing to walk in light is that you have denied the living God. No, you, 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 you didn't get that. God is not only in a book. 
some people are fighting to keep a book there's a book they are fighting to keep alive because if the book is closed the religion is closed if you like throw the bible away if you sin he will he will rise his discomfort inside of you he will register it now what that guy is trying to do is to kill that organic dimension so that you become reprobate and your case will become impossible and the same god you serve will now be the one to kill you So there's no other way for us to know that that doctrine came from the pit of hell to raise rebels against god that do not know the living god he leaves fingerprints of his dealings with you on your heart so that you will know how he feels he's living so can you imagine how backward men have gone for them to now be using pulpit ministry to pioneer that reprobate gospel but you see that's the day in which we live and we need men like Luke that have the capacity to set things in order Luke's summary of the book of Luke Luke himself he summarized the book of Luke in the book of Acts and he says the former three times have I made O Theophilus of all that Jesus began both to do and to preach So his preaching ministry was predicated of a, on, on a doing ministry for 30 years his life revealed what it means to submit to the obedience of his father the authority of his father that's what he did for 30 years if the father say wake up now he wakes up he doesn't have an agenda for the days the father that gives him an agenda and he kept doing that for 30 years that's why before he did any miracle the father brought accreditation to him and said this one is my beloved son in whom i am well no miracle his living was accurate and it was upon that accurate living that his ministry was based and if you check the requirement of ministry in the book of first timothy chapter 3 hallelujah do you realize that there's no anointing requirement there it's living requirement he must be a husband of one wife that means scripture scripture is revealing that there's a possibility that you can like many women but it says that what a minister of god in the midst of all the options is the husband of I know most of you are not married when you get married you will be busy by one woman what, what, what? not two you will be preoccupied <laughs> that's when you will know that you are not spiritual there are days where your tongues will be mockery even you yourself you know that you need something more you will never know how much you need God until you marry it's it's a revelation of fibers of your fabric that you are not aware is in existence then you will seek God's help oh it's a setup it's a setup to ensure that the life in the flesh is sentenced to death that's the only way you can walk Now, you don't have a ministry if you can't keep a woman go and sit down you have no ministry our forefathers that pioneered this way they were able to keep women what did Paul said even though he was a celibate he said do I not have the power to lead about a sister he knew it was his own destiny to live without marrying but he was saying that it is not because he lacks the ability to to lead the sister the power is there it is when you marry that you now discover it requires power <laughs> I am woman requires what power because the anointing is going to rest on the structure of what you have built as a lifestyle and Jesus was excellent 
in living under the authority of God and God attested to that and his spoken ministry was just for three and a half years built on 30 years of living if you if you know the government of God and the place of the government of God in the life of a representative of God you will take more time in your prayers to deal with excesses in your character and a wife is a major tool that will unveil those excesses uh, oh. very soon you will know whether you talk too much you will know you will know and then you now say god and i people say they are blessed when i preach but i've discovered that i have grace to say things that you are not saying that becomes a body it will humble you in that humility eh, god will find the cracks the cracks of your brokenness and the, the oil of grace or gladness it will flow through the cracks mm. you will discover that uh, fruit is cultivated but gift is coveted you know when you cultivate uh, you understand uh, the fruits of the spirit fruits is what cultivated gift is coveted it's easy to get gift but if you are going to have fruit you will cultivate it you will cultivate it you will cultivate it you need to wake up in the morning and say holy spirit i want to obey you today and then when you go out you you fight with okada slap a boss man insult the grandfather of someone that tried to despise you when you come back home you go back to holy spirit and say i fought i slapped and I insulted the foundation of men. Have mercy on me. Then the next day, when you are going again, you say, Holy Ghost, I want to obey you. Every day, come back and report to him. You will know that the cure, that actually fruit is, is cultivated. There will, there's no miracle like on the altar when you are wedding people. No miracle happens at the altar. <laughs> <laughs> the way they came that's how they will start the journey they come with suit like this come with suit <laughs> wake up wake up <laughs> the resources with which you came that's what you will go and use to start the project Is cultivated he said that a man of God must not be a striker that means if people offend him he should not be making plans on how to retaliate he should have the capacity he should have valves here and valves so when pressure mounts he, he, he releases it if not human beings can make you become an unbeliever in the night not even in the daytime and you want to kill he says not a striker a man that can let go you will not learn that in bible study you cultivate it because most of you you came from lineages of hunters people that hunt so you will need to learn hey, you will mean, uh, that one is not by accident that's when you will know how much you need the supply of god's grace because fruit is cultivated and gift is just coveted with fasting and prayer and you are asking that's all you need to do to get a gift and if you continue what you did to get the gift it will grow so you cannot be a man with big gift and it is hanging on no character you are a disaster you are working for satan satan knows that all the things you are going to achieve with that anointing will be harvest for you Those are the men that do damage in the body. They use the gift to attract so many people. But with the false character, they begin to damage the very destinies of men that the gift has attracted. So he said the former traitors. I, I, I'm saying this to know what is your emphasis. Because probably you came here expecting you are going back with wind anointing. 
God will make it available. But this infrastructure that can handle it, if it's not there, it would cause damage to the body of Christ. Hallelujah. It will do what? Cause damage. There are some kinds of fasting I have not started. Because I have noticed there are some things that God still needs to deal with. It's easy to generate anointing. I have not started those kind of fasting yet. I'm still trusting God. There are, there are some cultivations I'm doing. When I see that God has helped me in those areas, then I can do that type of fasting. If the anointing comes, it will have a solid foundation. He said, not guilty of filthy looker. A genuine man of God cannot be motivated. There is nothing he will see that his testimony will change. He said, ah, he's speaking something. Dead? No, no. He's dead to money. That is cultivated, not coveted. A man of God, according to scripture, you can't move him with anything his eyes sees. Jesus' pattern for ministry. Everything the anointing did. The anointing was resting on a foundation of 30 years of accurate living. May the Lord give you understanding. Let's push on. First thing we need to establish there is that the lecture that Jesus had with this disciple was on one subject only. And the subject of the lecture were things pertaining to the kingdom of God. So when Jesus came for 40 days, he was trying to establish the most important things. And the emphasis of his 40-day lecture were things concerning the kingdom of God. I forgot. No, 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 no. I'm just, this is my own Bible. So I'm, I'm showing you that the content. I didn't bring my diary. It's on my table. In that diary, I summarized the Bible. The book of Genesis was the meaning. Exodus, Leviticus, Numbers, Deuteronomy, Joshua, Judges, to Revelation. We, we can draw a thread from Genesis to Revelation. You will see that this book is the book of the kingdom. This is not a text for motivational preaching. If you want to do motivational preaching, there are many textbooks you can find. And, and the authors are not necessarily Christians. Alright? Because motivational preaching is not the reason for which this book was designed. And if this is your major text for motivational preaching, you will soon enter into error. Because this is not the purpose for which this book was designed. This book is a book of the kingdom. First thing we need to establish there is that the lecture that Jesus had with these disciples was on one subject only. And the subject of the lecture were things pertaining to the kingdom of God. So when Jesus came for 40 days, he was trying to establish the most important things. And the emphasis of his 40-day lecture were things concerning the kingdom of God. I forgot. No, 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 no. I'm just, this is my own Bible. So I'm, I'm showing you that the content. I didn't bring my diary. It's on my table. In that diary, I summarized the Bible. The book of Genesis was the meaning. Exodus, Leviticus, Numbers, Deuteronomy, Joshua, Judges, to Revelation. We, we can draw a thread from Genesis to Revelation. You will see that this book is the book of the kingdom. This is not a text for motivational preaching. If you want to do motivational preaching, there are many textbooks you can find. And, and the authors are not necessarily Christians. Alright? Because motivational preaching is not the reason for which this book was designed. And if this is your major text for motivational preaching, you will soon enter into error. 
because this is not the purpose for which this book was designed this book is a book of the kingdom not of motivation if you are teaching kingdom here you will always be accurate because this is the text for kingdom it's designed to establish the kingdom of christ among all nations this will be the text you will need to do that kind of business oh there's prosperity here for your information but this is not a text for prosperity if all you are preaching from this book is how to make, how people can prosper by god you will soon enter into error and at some point you will not be able to strike the balance that will keep the angel of commerce at bay your teaching will facilitate the possession of the soul of those people you preach to by the angel of commerce even lucifer himself and the people you are raising will be materially driven and that will be their focal point and not christ because the, in the kingdom christ is the center and the circumference christ is the extent and the limit of divine revelation it is his throne that is the administration that governs all the purposes of god in the heavenlies it is by the infrastructure that his throne has allowed that you can connect with god and god can connect with you As wonderful as the doctrine of holiness is this book is not a book of holiness is the book of the kingdom if you if this is the book you are using and your the only thing you are preaching is holiness you will soon enter into error you would you will say a lot of things that are not in this book as a means of backing up are you with me you are now I, I know you don't like that one because a lot of people in the name of holiness have brought a lot of things into the body of Christ that is not there. Because they thought that is a book of holiness. It is a book of the kingdom. And when Jesus came for 40 days, the only thing he taught from this book were things pertaining to what? To the kingdom of God. And just in case you want the story of prosperity from this bible the bible says seek ye first the kingdom of god and his laws ensure that you are right with his laws then the things that you need for the prosecution of your divine purpose will navigate in your direction that's the prescription it means as far as this, this book is concerned prosperity is the result of alignment if by any means you stumble on prosperity any other way it means what you stumbled on is the angel of commerce and your soul has been possessed you will need to interact with the pure word of god in form of milk to win you from the influence of that false doctrine the thing about doctrine is that it travels with winds you know you have heard wind of doctrine before wind of doctrine okay let me show you the winds the winds that accompany doctrine such that is called wind of what If I have any opportunity again, subsequently I will continue. I will continue from where I start. Let me get you a scripture quickly. Daniel chapter 7. Let's, let's winds of doctrine. In the first year of Belteshazzar, king of Babylon, Daniel had a, a dream and visions of his head upon his bed. Then he wrote the dream and told the sum of the matters 
Daniel spake and said, I saw in my vision by night, behold, the four winds of heaven strove upon the great sea, and four beasts came out of out from the sea, divers one from another. And we know prophetically that the sea talks about peoples, nations, tribes. And there were winds that strove upon peoples. Winds of doctrine. Are you with me? When these winds of doctrine, because what the winds are trying to achieve is to attract the people to pay attention to them. It means that the greatest instrument with which you can manipulate people are ideologies, philosophies. And when you begin to drive philosophies and people begin to respond to philosophies, at the end of the day, what they will receive is not just philosophies, but beasts will come out of the sea. Demons will eventually visit the people that accept several philosophies that are from hell. Because the philosophy came with a beast. So there are spiritual entities that, that accompany philosophies. And if I'm preaching accurately from the Spirit of God, the Spirit of God will accompany what I teach and it is the Spirit of God that will make people do what I teach. You get that? He will set them upon... You know, the Bible says that the Spirit entered into me when He spoke with me. And He did what? So it's the Spirit of God that will enter you when I'm speaking with you. And the Spirit of God will be the one to energize you to do the things I say. It's not about the preacher, but it's about the volume of the Spirit that is being communicated, transmitted. Are you with me? So when winds of doctrine begin to go round, what you have is that demons follow behind and the effect that those things will have on people is not the effect that the teaching brings but the effect that the spirit behind it impacts on the people the first thing I want to tell us before I round up is that in the day of the apostles when the day of the apostles is born the emphasis of the kingdom of God as the focal point of God's business must rise again. Go with me to the book of Acts chapter 8. Let us, Philip is the first evangelist. Let us see what he preached in Samaria. In Acts chapter 8. Verse 5. Acts 8, 5 and 12. Acts 8, 5 and 12. Then Philip went down to the city of Samaria and preached what? Christ unto them. 12 now. But when they believed, Philip preaching the things concerning the... The what? Kingdom of God. So the people that attended the lecture that Jesus gave knew that the focal point of what? Of God's business upon the face of the earth is kingdom. In the kingdom, there is a need for faith. In the kingdom, there is a need for holiness. All these things we teach is part of it. Are you with me? But it is not holiness. It is not faith. Faith is an elementary doctrine. A doctrine that when the body of Christ captures, they, are, they will go on to perfection. They will leave issues of faith. You will not hear teachings of faith again. If, if it's true that maturities begin to build in the body of Christ, we would have left the teaching of faith. It's elementary. It's basic. It's fundamental. Like the doctrine of laying on of hands. There's no need for us to come Sunday after Sunday and then teach people the implication of laying hands. Those are elementary factors. We should know it and then we should now be reaching out to perfection, to maturity. The same way that laying on of hands is not a doctrine that we can hold on to and be teaching every day. That's how we can't teach faith every day. It's expected that because our God is invincible and we cannot touch him with our material hands, Faith is the only currency by which you can engage in. And once you are taught faith 
and you are you begin to practice prayer because in prayer you interface with god then you'll know what faith is and the currency with which you touch god that should not be a doctrine that will preach every day so when god when when paul says we need to go on to maturity what is the kind of food that is given unto mature christians huh bones what's the name of the bones now i don't have time but we'll do that whenever i come next i will show you what is called the word of righteousness the word of righteousness is actually the food for the mature in the apostolic center uh, <laughs> hallelujah the word of righteousness that's for the mature then we'll, we'll, we'll lay the foundation of the word of righteousness the message concerning righteousness that message is the message that has to do with our accountability before God Are you? that God runs a justice system whose jurisdiction is beyond the invincible realm he also accommodates the visible realm it is that justice system that Adam was being educated about when God told him that the day you eat of this fruit you will surely die that action is covered by the justice system so every action you take the justice system of heaven has a way to interpret it and even though Ogbe was called into the Nigerian bar he's part of MBA so he's prolific in interpreting the laws of Nigeria and for representing somebody in court on the basis of that law the law by which Cain was condemned to become a fugitive and a vagabond that law in the dock testimony was received by blood it was blood the blood of Abel that took testimony to that court made the court to sit invoked the writ of summons and subsequent cross-examination that Cain was subjected to it was blood you will need more than being called to the Nigerian bar to be a lawyer in that context Are you with me? You are now with are, are you here? So in the word of righteousness, the scripture shows us is the doctrine that reveals our accountability before God. And it is in that context that the parable of the talents, parable of the virgins, that's when Jesus started the message of the word of righteousness. He said they had, eh, they had talent, just like all of us have talents. Abby, the fact that you have talents in the case they, it, it's proof that you will give account. It's not only sinners that will give account. You with talent too. And the Bible said the talents were given according to their several ability. The word ability there implicates grace. Because it's grace that provides the enablement for us to function in the things of God. Using the abilities of God to do God's work. So that God can recognize the work that is done. Yes. So because you have talents. Your use of the talents will determine how you will be confronted by the justice system of heaven. That, that kind of meat is for mature people. Virgins. The way you live your Christian life will be a basis for you to account. There's an accounting, there's, there's, there's an accountability platform that will be set up to examine the way you lived your Christian life, your priorities, your choices, what you lived for, how you ordered yourself. The next time I come, we'll go into deep matters. We've been talking children talk for too long in the body of Christ. I'm wondering when we will whisper as elders. So the emphasis we have heard as preachers in the body of Christ is what has bedeviled the church and made the church infantile. We raise the consumer generation that are not that are not acquainted with the things concerning the kingdom of God. We will touch it next time when I show up. But tonight. The reason why you came here is because God wants to commission you for 
labor in the kingdom. You know, uh, the, the kind of messages that are coming, like the, one that, the ones that came this morning, they, they, those are not the type that are popular. And you might even wonder, why are they emphasizing this kind of matters? Because you are not aware of the justice system of heaven. You have not yet known that there is a place in that court in heaven that is called the judgment seat of Christ. Now, our understanding of that place is beveled. We need to shed light on it so that we will see that judgment seat. That every believer will appear before. Because what many preachers teach is that when you come to the judgment seat there's no rebuke it's just for reward you'll be surprised i will show you scriptures tomorrow or any other time i come up so that you can order your life today because the way you live today under the government of god is what will determine your status in the age to come and only believers that are reaching for maturity and stature with god are, are concerned about how God's principle of justice sees their actions and the decisions that they take. But God will help us. We are going to pray two prayer points. Oh my God. Two prayer points. Just two prayer points. Working with God is big business. It's serious business. And the moment God begins to promote you, just know that you are, you are more at risk of failing God. Sometimes you need to leave the crowd and go to the bush where you are, only you, you are standing before God. You can't lie under such circumstances. So that God can assess you. It is from those kind of places you call your wife and ask for mercy. Because the light has shined. And you know that if you keep that darkness, God knows that it's a decision that you have taken to harbor darkness. Can we pray? Briefly, two prayer points. The scripture we'll use is um, Hebrews chapter 12 verse 28. Seeing that we have received a kingdom that cannot be moved. So it means that scripture is not written to people that have not yet seen that we have received a kingdom that cannot be moved. And I know many of us don't understand when we say a kingdom that cannot be moved. In that kingdom, that was the same kingdom that John was exposed to. And John saw that there was a book that was written in heaven within and on the backside that was sealed with seven seals. And the way the book was fashioned was such that when a search was run, not by Google, a search deeper than Google, the conclusion that was that no man was found in heaven and on earth to open the book, to look, loose the seals and to look thereon. Just in case a mighty personality comes, opens the book, breaks the seals, you cannot look thereon because it's shrouded in light. You will need piercing eyes, judging eyes to read the book. John began to weep when he got the report that no man was found. And I was wondering if you, had, if you write a book and the information in the book, men need to access it and no man is found worthy to open the book. Won't you reduce the, the standard? But we have received a kingdom that cannot be moved. When the immortals put their stamp and say, This is the standard from everlasting to ever, they can wait. You know, it's only you that is hurrying for time. Immortals don't know time. From everlasting to everlasting, that will be the standard. And they will wait for someone to gain the stature to enter. That is when that protocol will begin. So John, knowing the nature of the mortals, went 
outside of the court and began to cry and then he missed the next event because upon the next event an elder came to him and said don't cry again this your tears is drawn from the last scenario something has just happened you didn't see that that's some people's prayer have expired but they are still praying because there's no encounter to tell them of the current status of things in the chamber he said weep not because the lion of the tribe of judah he has prevailed it means the balances the, the scales of judgment the scales of justice the scales of equity that were put in place he prevailed over it and end the stature to open the book the book was closed until a personality prevailed it's a kingdom that cannot be moved oh the last person that moved in the anointing god has allocated for you there was a price he paid it's a kingdom that cannot be moved you will pay the same price when you come into this kingdom emotion dies it is standard and measures not emotion and feelings he said when you realize that you have received a kingdom that cannot be moved that's when you will know the need for grace let us have grace it is this scripture that now revealed to us that it is possible for you to be serving god but your service is not accepted because you did not receive grace for the service and the reason for which you need grace he now gave us a revelation our God is what now it's not what you think when Jesus was revealed in the book of Revelation on the Isle of Patmos you know the Bible revealed that he had burning eyes like a flame is that true and you know for human beings we have binocular vision you can see from 180 degrees either to the front or to the back and the extent to which you see is the same extent to which you are blind it's not like chicken that the eyes are here so you can see 360 if you chase chicken from the back he knows he's seen you but you can only see 180 to the front it means you can see only through your perspective because of binocular vision and this monarch that has flames in his eyes when he comes and sees your works and is not within his own perspective your works will burn that's what it means that our god is a consuming fire because it is a kingdom that what cannot be moved don't worry don't worry we will come with the the foundation of the word of righteousness which is the meat that that elders should be eating in the kingdom any day any day we can then you will find out the things we are celebrating and god is looking at us and wondering what made us mad let us have grace that's a prayer let us what do not think that ministry is as easy as you think all of us will need to go before God and hear what God wants because it's possible you are very creative you can be doing things that one is not ministry you are wasting time because this thing you are doing will be evaluated before a throne and if it's not consistent with its perspective it will be born 